All right, this is Chris from Brothers Speed Podcast, where we discuss black LGBT issues and topics. And I got a very special guest. I got to be honest with you, we've been going back and forth for a few months. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back and forth. <laughs> Just to kind of see, hey, you know, yeah, you ready? You ready? All right, all right, let's stop for a little bit, then we go back and forth again. But, you know, the good part about it is we got him on the show, and I really appreciate David J. Cork, the actor, the writer, the director, Ooh. the creator, coming to the show with Brother Speak Podcast and uh, giving us and blessing us with his time. So I do appreciate that. And to kind of talk a little bit about his career and talk about some of the things that kind of brought him to to fame a little bit, especially with the by the web series, which actually made me fall in love with web series, and also some future projects he's going on. So I definitely want to talk to you. How you doing, David? I am doing great, Chris. How are you? I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. I can't complain about it. You know, I, you know, the thing about it is what kind of got me to 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 actually pay attention to you was definitely. You know, some of the things that, that actually I found online, it was actually the web series. And, you know, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. But, you know, I want to kind of start in the beginning because some audience who de- who don't necessarily know you, it's a good introduction to kind of get them to get familiar with David. Oh. Uh, so, you know, uh, first oh, off, okay. you, 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 <laughs> well, you know, you started you started acting and you, when, when did you actually start acting? Let me ask that first. Um, so when I was a kid, I originally wanted to be a singer. Um, singing was the thing that I really, really wanted to do. And around like middle school, I was on a school play and fell in love with acting. I was like, this is it. I'm going to start doing this. So when I went to high school, that's when I started training. And then I'd say, um, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been doing acting for, for ever since high school, essentially. And um, as far as professionally goes, I feel that... Since 2010, 2010, I would say I've been professionally acting. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, and you know, you you definitely started in a couple of uh, TV movies and also series and short films. But what really catapults you a little bit to uh, towards to get gain a little more attention was definitely creating your own content. And my yeah. first question was that when it comes to creating your own content. That's one thing, but mm-hmm. to to have it somewhat to be a part of your life. First off, what's the initial feeling to say that I'm going to create this about my life? What what was that thought process? Well, you know, um, I originally sat down to create by the web series because I wanted to create a series that could drive me as an actor. And I also saw this as an opportunity to give a voice to something that I didn't see a lot of, which was a bisexual man. I didn't see a lot of programming that was catered to bisexual men in particular. And being a black bisexual man, I felt that it was my duty to share my story or share like a piece of my story to the world. Um, it was also me coming to terms with myself. It was also me stepping into um, my own identity and owning it. And what I didn't realize was how many people would be moved by this story because they got the opportunity to see themselves on this show. And that's what's been the, the, the best part about the whole thing is finding a community based off of me creating work that I wanted to just share from a place of, you know, humility and a place of love and just finding a community based off of that. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, man, you know, could I have done that? First off, I had to talk to my mama, my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> talk to my man. Talk to <laughs> I said, uh, let me tell y'all something first before y'all hear it from the next door neighbor. I mean, did you did you have to go through that process? Of, <laughs> did you have to go through that process a little bit um, with your family? Um, I, I mean, I, I, I realized that I was the term bisexual for me came up, and I really connected with it around when I was like eighteen, nineteen, and I shared it with my mother. Pretty early, I, I told her pretty quickly. She and I are very close, and I just wanted to make sure that she knew. Um, my dad, I told him a little differently. Um, I kind of gave hints. I kind of dropped like little clues here and there. Um, and then, of course, like with my <laughs> man, oh my god, then, I can um, imagine. <laughs> and then, um, with my friends, I was always very open about it. Um, okay. And to be completely honest, it it came from a time where I was trying to heal. I was I was trying to learn about trying to learn about dating um, 
different genders. I was trying to learn about how that how that works. And oh. I started writing trying to heal for myself. And what turned out was just this amazing thing. And I understood that in telling this story, I'm like, no, David, you're going to be telling on yourself. You're going to be putting yourself out there. Are you okay with that? Yeah. And I said, you know, I always want to be the most authentic and the most honest in anything that I do. So if I feel like I have to hold back in any way, then that's not something that I need to be doing. And I was like, this is really me going all in and I'm ready to do it. And so... Wow. I did it. Let me say, but you know, I, I like the fact that you wanted to create your own content first off, because really the, the, now you said the, the, the writing processes was kind of, kind of like kind of the healing process as well. What do you mean by that? Well, um, <laughs> so when, when I was, when I was originally coming up with the idea for the show, I had recently broken up with a, well, let's be fair. I wasn't really dating. I wasn't like dating, fully dating either one of them. But I was dating a couple of people at the, at one time. Ah, got it. Okay, and I get it. I was it. dating a girl. I was dating a guy. Dating another guy, and they all came to my birthday party, and the whole thing kind of blew up in my face. Oh, and I was like, all right. God. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Let like, me tell you. All right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I have to learn something. Okay. So this this is where the writing took off. And I remember I called my mom and I was like, Mom, this is my situation. I don't know what's going on. This is really crazy. My life is so weird. My love life is ridiculous. And she goes, baby, your love life is a TV show. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> and I just ran with that. I just ran from there. Oh, my. Wow. Guess what? She's right. She was right. <laughs> because I, I honestly, you know, when I, at that time I was not, I think you know, a couple years back, I really wasn't. Uh, watching web series as I thought, you know, as they, I've heard a couple of people saying, "Oh, it's great! Watch this show, watch that show." And I think what I, mm-hmm. I think the the boy next door, uh, because it was on TV first, mm-hmm. and then it wound up uh, going into web series and second series. But when I started to do my own search, by stood out, and the reason why by stood out mm-hmm. is because I thought it was actually good acting, really great acting. Great writing. I thought the everything was of quality, you know, and that's what really kind of kept me going with it. That's what really kind of kept me watching it. And Thank so, you. you know, I I, I said, Thank okay, you. this is this is a show that I like. You know, this is a show for me. And I actually kind of told people about it too to kind of watch it too. What was it? Well, first off, making your own content that had that probably was not an easy thing to do. Am I wrong in that? Oh man. Um, okay. <laughs> um, you know, what's crazy is I, I was just, I was just watching an interview with Issa Rae maybe, maybe this morning okay. and she was talking about how, um, how you can see how you can be real creative when you're broke and <laughs> it's true. You can be real creative when you are broke and, and I, 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 um, I was watching her show as inspiration to try to help me figure out, like, how does the web series work? And I had also had just uh, started working with uh, Dane Joseph on a project. Dane Joseph uh, has the web series called Drama Queens. Okay. So I asked him, like, oh, what was your experience like? Um, what did you do? Did you come across these things, that thing? And I also reached out to some friends of mine, um, Ashton Pino, who helped me film and he directed the first season and Glenn Quentin he directed the second season and he plays Kai in the series he um helped with the writing process he like you know we were bound like we he would we the script and like give me ideas I'm like okay great cool but when it came time to shoot I was like all right okay how can we film this on a very very small budget right. by small budget I mean no budget like how can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! How can, how can we how can we shoot this bad boy and make it look good? And thankfully, Ashton was like this one man camera crew machine. He was doing his thing. We had um, Elizabeth Geller. She came on and was like uh, our our project coordinator. So she was helpful with like coming up with the the uh, the, uh, the call sheets, and she was also doing sound. And then also if one of the actors wasn't in a scene. They were helping with sound, too. So I really was able to reach out to my friends, and I threw a couple of auditions out and was like, hey, working on this project, can't pay you, but do you want to do it? It might be fun. And I was just impressed with how many people 
were invested. Like they read the script and they were like, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's make it happen. And so many people were excited. So many people wanted to be involved. And I'm just, I was so thankful for all the people that wanted to help out. Wow. And when it came time for, here's my thing. So me being so creative, I was like, the opening scene needs to take place at a wedding. This is going to be so great. But when it came time to try to find locations, I was like, crap. <laughs> I did not think this through. <laughs> Where am I going to find a church? Oh, and wow. I just got really lucky. And I, I told a church, hey, this is what I'm doing. And they were like, great. So it, it just it, things just really lined up in my favor. And I think, you know, the universe, God, whatever, you, you know, whomever you believe in, really had my back in this whole process. Because wow. There were many nights, many a times where I was like, I don't know how this is going to happen. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen next. And I was like, you know what? I'm in it. I'm in it 100%. Let's do it. And things just magically happened. And then I also learned that um, even though I might have written a scene to take place in like a really fancy place, it doesn't have to take place in that fancy place. It right. can take place on a park bench. You know, like locations don't have to be like these overly extravagant places they can be you know my apartments they can be the restaurant that i work at and it was just really just me asking people hey i want to do this can i shoot here i can't really pay you but can i do it and they're like yeah sure why not wow people love publicity and <laughs> people love to help out so i just got really lucky just and the power of that wants to create their own content you know just get a nice group of people around you reach out to your friends reach out to people that you know have your back and I tell you what, they'll they'll take you a long way. That's that's for dang sure. Just the power of asking, just the power of to be asking. asking. Wow, wow. <laughs> so yeah. this is this is and then why the real? So how much how much attention did you really gain from this? Did you really get a, a kind of gain? A, I see you are on definitely you are on now this, which I was like, hey, wait a minute, that's David, you know. So, and that is, I, I, I talk know. I talk like we already had dinner yeah, or something, you know. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> But the thing about it is, I'm thinking, okay, this is, he's really, really cast a lot of attention on this. Did you really expect to really get as much as attention as you got? No. Not at all. Not, not at all. Um, I, I wasn't doing it for that. <laughs> Honestly enough, I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing it for attention. I wasn't doing it to, to, um, seek like approval or anything i was doing it because i wanted to tell a story okay i wanted to share a story and i wanted people to find it and i was hoping that people that could relate to it would find it and it's just amazing how many people related to it and how many people found it because it was a voice that i felt was missing yeah. and i i wanted to put it out there i wanted to let you know i wanted to let somebody else know hey you're not alone. You know, I, you, you you like all genders. I like all genders, you know? Right, right. So you're not alone. And we're, there's nothing wrong with that. Because the way that bisexuality is portrayed uh, the majority of the time is in a negative way. And I really wanted to make sure that people knew that it's not always negative and the way that you feel is okay. That was most important for me. And if people connected to that, they connected to that. I was not looking to be like the next big YouTube star by producing this series and putting it on YouTube. I personally just wanted to share a story and I just want to give myself an opportunity to act. Gotcha. That's gotcha. really all I want to do, you know? I just, I just want to act. Yeah. And I'm just so blessed at how many things have kind of spiraled and transpired because of this action. This is good. You know, I'm, and, and the thing about it is, you know, it's kind of funny because we have, um, over here down in, in Florida, what we normally have, we have a brother speak where we actually, you know, meet, we talk about different topics, and bisexuality did come up. And, I, you know, we had to kind of catch the audience for a little bit. It's like, wait a minute, you know, the number of negative things that piled out was just like, ridiculous i mean and so we we couldn't mm -hmm. we couldn't understand like wait a minute how come so many people and the first thing i thought this is and correct me if i'm wrong you know if someone who actually was dating someone bisexual they know that the other person they possibly can't compete with and i, and I, and I thought maybe it's more from an ego standpoint more from a personal standpoint not just the fact that they just couldn't deal with somebody who's open to you know to be able to mm -hmm. to be more fluid but 
not necessarily somebody that they really can't compete against. You know, you, you know, it's somebody that they don't have the same parts as he does or she does, you know. So I thought first and foremost, it probably came from that standpoint. Is that Am I kind of missing something here a little bit or have you come across that? Do you see that people kind of agree with you on that? In, in, my, in my dating experiences, um, that has come up all the time. Um, if I'm dating a, uh, a woman, she, she'll say, Oh, uh, if you if, if you cheat on me, just cheat on me with a uh, uh, with a woman. And I'm like, why am I cheating? But it, it, but that's not that's not what's important. The fact that oh, if you cheat on me, cheat, make sure it's a woman. And then um, the, the the men that I've dated, the cis men that I've dated, they they say, oh well, um, if you're with the girl, she can give you babies, and that's not fair. And I'm like, but that's not <laughs> that's wow. not what it is. For me, I I'm connected to. Your, your your spirit. I'm connected to your, your your soul. I'm connected to that. That's what I. That's what I'm here for. I'm connected to your to your heart. Like what's on the outside doesn't really matter to me. What what matters to me is who you are. And if who you are vibes with who I am, then we we can jam. Like we, right, we can right. have a fun time. Right. And that's that's what's important. And what's so interesting is, I think that a lot of the the stigma that is placed on bisexual bisexuality. Specifically, bisexual men um, may come from this idea of the down low black man, yeah. um, and how that's like the bad thing, like it's so taboo. Because it, I think that the, the DL black man was actually a bisexual black man that did not have the opportunity or the, the space or the safety to be himself to explore sexuality. And I think that having that space there is important because sexual fluidity is a real thing. And people should be open to that. I completely agree with you. Completely agree with you. And, and it's kind of sad because we actually kind of kind of put specific things on top of things that we just things that we really just can't understand. We'll start to get all give mm-hmm. negative things towards that what we don't understand to take the time to do it. But you yeah. know, but let me tell you, like I said, this the series definitely took off, and with the skill set. But by the way, did you have directing skills before this? Did you have producing skills before this? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. okay. <laughs> it's all okay. It just all had to come no. up. You learn, learn on the spot. I got it. I got it. We, so we, we we learn as we go. We as we go. <laughs> so now with these skills that you've now acquired. You wound up putting it over to another series called True Twenty Five. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, with True Twenty Five, I am I'm just an actor on that one. Actually, oh really? Um, okay. Marshall okay. Thurman. Yeah, Marshall Thurman. She she runs that show. That's that's her baby. Um, we Marshall and I we we've checked in a couple of times. She'll ask it, you know because we're both series creators. So she's like, you know, I really learned a lot watching your show. I'm like, yo, I learned a lot working with you. So. It's been like a very, it's been a very cool process being a, being an actor on a different series, but still like being able to support her and be like, hey, you know, do do your thing. Whenever she'd ask me questions as far as like, you know, how how was this process for you? We we, we chat and we check in, but yeah, three twenty five. That's all. That's all. Mark oh, got it, I can't got put it. my name on the producer side on that one. <laughs> um, that, that's all. all right, but now you do have some projects coming up though. Can you tell me a little about that? I do, I do indeed. Um, I have one project called the X Cycle. That is a series of. Um, it's it's going to be a. All right, let's look at it like a mini series. Right. The way I'm going to release it is a mini series. Um, it's going to follow four different former couples as they um, uh, get that closure. That 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 you know that 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 thing that you need from your ex that you sometimes don't get. And even though you try to remove your ex from your life, you realize you can't really get rid of them. Especially if there's something that binds you together, wow. like a child or an apartment or a business or a friendship, something that binds you together. And I really wanted to explore the question, can exes be friends? And Ooh. I think there's many series kind of dives into that. And this, this one I wrote and I directed, I'm not in. So it's, it's really fun for me to be on the other side, to really work with the actors and talk with them and really help them with the inner workings and be build these characters together. So that was a really fun experience for me. Nice. Um, and then I'm also working on a documentary with my mentor, Dr. Haruku T. It is a documentary called No Homo, No Hetero. 
And what the series essentially is, what the documentary is essentially about is we're trying to uh, address the, the stigma associated with black men who are sexually fluid. And we've already shot a series of interviews, panel discussions, uh, there's some performance art with it. And we also have a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. If you go to Indiegogo and just type in no homo, no hetero, you can actually help us um, reach our stretch goal because we've already hit our initial goal, which is $25,000. We hit $24,000 stock, $24,000 in the first four days of our campaign. Nice. And so now we're doing stretch goals to um, really, you know, reach out a little bit further, try to get our editing to get our editing team together, trying to get our marketing team together. And um, like I said, if you go to Indiegogo.com and type in no homo, no hetero, you can find a way to contribute and uh, jump in on some of the really cool perks that we have as well. Wow, this is actually, it sounds like a really cool project. I, I really, I do want to see it. I really want to definitely do it. And you say go on Indiegogo, and this is where you can be able to, to give your own donation, give your own yeah. contribution. Oh, yeah. Indiegogo.com, just type in no homo, no hetero, and our project pops right up. Um, you can donate there. It, it's going to be really awesome. Um, like I said, we already interviewed a lot of people, and it's just been, it's, oh, man, it's, it's, <laughs> For, for me, being this guy who created by the web series, so I could, you know, kind of release my pain and try to connect with other bi men, to now actually working with other bi men, it, by by uh, cis men, by trans men, it, it's phenomenal. It, it's so inspiring um, to hear like other people. Uh, this this is gonna sound really crazy, but to hear like that somebody else have like a similar experience to me, yeah, it's, it's great because whenever I go to certain like meetings. And there's conversations going on. There's something that I don't connect to. But when I hear other people that connect to similar experiences that are like almost identical to mine, it's 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 so moving and it's it's beautiful. And I'm really thankful to be a part of this project. Wow, wow. This, you know what? I'm really I'm getting excited because I do want to see what else you got in store, and I do want to kind of watch it. So let me tell you, when you do, when it's officially launched and everything's up and going. Please, please, please send me an email so I can be able to just blast it out as many people as possible. And you know, I, I definitely want to be able to to continue to to follow your work because I like it. I, I do like what you do. And, and let me Thank tell you, you something: it, it's one of the, it's a good thing to kind of give people another perspective, and from a perspective not from their own idea or any way of thinking, but from an actual point of view of the person who's actually sitting from that perspective. I love to see it. Love to see it. So let me, and by the way, now this also got on. Just to make sure, because I initially I saw the the going back to Dubai just one more time. I initially saw it on a true a web. I can't talk right now. YouTube. Now it's also on Slay TV. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Oh yeah, yes it is. How, how did that? How did that come I about? Them. How did that come I about? love them. <laughs> um, oh man, uh, Sean. Sean, he uh, reached out to me. Oh, when did Sean? When did I meet Sean? I have to think about this. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with, um, with Donye's work. Are you familiar with Donye's work? No. Donye created, um, he and his husband created um, the Each Other Project, and they had the they had the series um, Modern Day Black Gay, and they had another series called I Hate New York, and um, he and his husband had a picnic, and I met Sean. There, but but Sean, I, I knew Sean because Sean had um, oh the name of the series escapes me right now. No shade, Sean had no shade. Okay, and I had seen no shade, and I was like, this is really fun. Got it, and you know we we connected because we're you know we're we're, we're we live in New York City. We're we're, we're content creators. You know we <laughs> kind of walk in the same circles. You go to one party, they throw they throw out David's name. You go to another party, they throw out Sean's name. You know <laughs> the name drop game, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, we got to this, we go to this picnic. We go to this picnic, and um, we just connected. We just clicked. Like it was like our first time meeting. We knew of each other. We had seen each other's work, and we got this opportunity to talk. And I remember he was telling me this is like in the very beginning stages of Slate TV. And he was telling me how he wanted, you know, to to bring me on board in some way. And then once it was like up and ready to go, he was like, "Can I have vibes?" And I was like, "Absolutely!" Like it was like no question. <laughs> It was, it was no question at all. Like, no, like, of course. Like, well, the work that you're doing, the work that you and your husband are doing is phenomenal. So, yes, please, take my show. <laughs> <laughs> no, because... <laughs> no, take because, my show. Uh, like, their, their, their idea to create this, this, this platform 
so that all of these uh, content created by queer black artists can be in one space. That's beautiful. So, of course. yeah, I'll contribute. Absolutely. I'll contribute some more. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm considering writing another series for them, just like just, just an exclusive for them. I'm considering that. I mean, I have to find the time between, between you know, yeah. writing my own series and um, moving to the West Coast. So, yeah. Moving to oh, moving to the West Coast. Yeah, where you moving? So you moving away from New York? I'm I'm working to be bicoastal. Yeah, the bicoastal wants to be bicoastal. I'm I'm working on (laughs) being bicoastal. Um, my uh, Ashton, who who was my business partner behind by, he lives in LA now and. We, I don't know. We, we make magic together. We make we make things happen. Gotcha. And I really I really want to work up with him on some more projects. And every time I'm in California, it's just it's just a it's just, <coughs> excuse me. Every time I'm in California, it's always very refreshing and just like a nice, cool, cool new energy that breathes into my creativity. And I'm always like, yeah, I'm about to create real crazy stuff out here. <laughs> so I really want to make this bi- this bi-coastal thing happen because I always feel very empowered and very inspired when I'm on the West Coast. I love the East Coast. I've been here for almost 10 years. And I feel like I really grew up and became an adult. I became a man here. And I think a part of my journey now is to expand to the West Coast and you know, get my hand in that that pool. You know, audition some more. Hopefully, land a series. Hopefully, the series that I'm writing can get picked up. You know, yeah. You never know. I'm just I just want to reach out and you know, touch and move as many things as I can. Well, there's definitely one, one thing for sure. California is full of opportunities, so I'm sure I just, I'm sure you would do absolutely well and fit perfectly well within that market. And of course, hey, guess what? New York, guess what? New York is also there for you, regardless of what. Too Manhood Mondays. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so what I what I did is I wanted to um, to connect with. All right, let me start over. All so right. me, David, I <laughs> realized that I am becoming a man. I'm growing up, and there's this. I, I don't know. I don't know when he hit me, but I was like, "Yo, I'm a, I'm a man now. Like I, I'm a grown up." <laughs> and it really made me think. It's really making me think. Um, what does what does manhood mean? Like, what does that look like? What does that what is it, what does that represent? Um, what does it mean to other people? And so right now I'm reaching out to all men of color, cis men, trans men, to explain what manhood means to them. Um, some of the, some of the, the talking points I'm asking for people to speak on: um, Who taught you how to be a man? When did you realize you were a man? Um, what qualities do you believe a man should have? Um, and just, just it's just really like the responses that I've gotten so far have been really awesome. Uh, all the responses I'm usually asking for them to be like about a minute long because I'm sharing them as videos on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. Um, every Monday I release three videos from people that haven't been sending them into me, and it's just really creating an interesting conversation just between like generational lines and like between like a gay man and a straight man and what they think a man should be. And it's so, in some in some instances, uh, people when they're asking like qualities and traits, I find that they're look like they're describing the type of man that they want to find for themselves versus the type of man that they should be. So it's just it's just been really interesting. But yeah, I'm really exploring what manhood means to men of color because wow. I think that you know the hierarchy being the white man has like this this is what a man should be. Yeah, and. We, we kind of fall in a different place because, you know, us not being, like, the leader, we're, we're kind of like, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, once upon a time, we were, like, the sex symbol. We were, like, the object. You yeah. know, we weren't really thought of as, like, men. And now it's like we have this, this identity, this, 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 this moment in time where we're learning so much about ourselves, but we don't get the opportunity to really express it. And... That's something that I, like, even with me and my dad, we don't really talk about what it means to be a man, you know? And in the conversation that he, he sent, like, he, my dad was the first person to respond, which is, I, I love that man so much. Um, he was the first person to respond, and just the things that he was laying out as, like, this is what a man means to me, I always knew that like, he was teaching me these things, but he, like, taught me that stuff. Wow. And it's just so, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's great. And I, I like hearing different people's responses because I'm learning 
you know, more about just manhood in general and the fact that it kind of has a new face now. It's not it's not the macho manhood, like tough, strong thing that you think a lot of people would say. A lot of people are saying things like being responsible, being respectful, um, being truthful, being, being honest, earnest, speaking from your heart, like things like that, which is just really moving and shaking and inspiring me in other ways as well. Wow, I, you know what? I really like that. I really like the idea. That's a real, you know, and it's kind of funny because I was on Twitter one day and I did see you post a picture of your dad, and I did. You, know, you said that was a man that yeah. taught you how to be a man. That, so that was a one of the manhood Mondays. That that was one of those particular episodes. Yes, okay. it was. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Well, see, now that makes sense. I was like, okay, I actually I like the whole idea. I like the whole concept. I liked everything about it. that's what really, that really is interesting to hear everyone's perspective on what it is to be a man, especially yeah. people of color, men mm-hmm. of color in particular. Oh yeah, it's been it's been it's been really great. And like I said, like hearing for me, I'm I'm very interested in like because I had a young man that was nineteen. He said, I'm a man. And I was like, okay. Like, I'm not going to argue with you. Go ahead. <laughs> what he had to say was just, he just spoke He just spoke his truth. He was like, you know, being a man means I get to be myself. I don't have to answer to anybody. And I was like, all right, I'm with you. You know, and that was his thing. <laughs> okay. And then, and then I get some people, and then I get some people that are, that are older and they, they get stumped by the question because they've never really processed it. You know, but they just kind of like took on I'm a man and never like really thought about it. And now that I'm asking them, they, they they're almost shook and yeah. they're, 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 they're taken aback by the like, I don't even know what, what does it mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, why are you asking me? They're getting defensive at me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, it's kind I of, just, I just presented a question. It, it's kind of funny though, because that was a, a question that again, you know, I always kind of relate to Brothers Speak uh, down here and, and we'll, we talk about different things every Wednesday. And the I actually asked the question, what age did you realize that you are, you're, you're a man? And you know what, you'd be quite surprised mm-hmm. how many people was gave the age of 40s, 30s, 20s, 50s, mm. and 60s. So it, it mm. everybody changed their their whole idea of when they felt they were truly a man and the age they felt to that. It was a very interesting conversation. And, and I'm pretty sure the, like the, you know, the older ones were saying, you know what? I can, I'm 60 years old. I can say what the hell I want to say. I can care less about the politics. Mm-hmm. I can care less about who feels a certain way. And then you got the, the 41s in my case, you know, and the 40 year old saying, you know, I kind of don't care about the expectations anymore, and that was placed upon me. Mm-hmm. You know, you're kind of left with the expectations when you're twenties and you're fourteen, you're thirteens, and you're twenties, and you're leading up to your thirties, and then you got to the forties. It's like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm kind of done now. I'm shut all the expectations that's upon me, and in your twenties, it's more about independence, at least in my view, and that's what a lot of people in their twenties mm-hmm. in the group mm-hmm. also says more about. Independence. So it's it's definitely I can see why people would actually kind of give different varieties and have a different idea of what it is to really be a man. And I'm pretty sure the the 60 year olds thought 20s was being the man, and then they got to having families and thought differently. You know. So yeah. The, yeah, the, of course. The, 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 <laughs> kinda, Absolutely. Uh, bravo. <laughs> I, I like that, David. I like sure. I like that whole idea. That was a perfect perfect thing to play way of doing it. And you said you can follow this on your Mondays on. On what social media? Any particular platforms? It's on all the platforms, but uh, the one the one that's easiest to kind of chronologically see it is on my Instagram page. Gotcha. Okay. And what's your Instagram? Yeah. Um, same as my Twitter. Uh, David J. Okay. Da- oh, David J. Okay. All right. Well, that, like I said, I'm going to put all the information yeah. directly online. Everybody can be able to see it, see it, watch it, and I'll make sure Manhood Mondays. Put it out there so everybody can be able to see it. Thank you again. I do appreciate that, David. Cool. That was a piece of information that Thank honestly, you, I think I think a lot of people are going to appreciate your work. They're going to they see a lot of things coming from you, and I think I really really appreciate your work and what more to come. So definitely, like I said. Thank you for joining us today. And again, this is Brother Speed Podcast for, sure. for the second time. Count it off. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but guess what? It's okay. Listen, it's my oh, show. I can do whatever I want. Cut it all back on. Cut it off. So, <laughs> and right. must be podcast. We're signing That's off. Right. Thank you guys so much, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.